Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today I want to talk about frogs and toads and the difference of them. There are really precise times I like to throw a toad or a frog variation. And it's something that I don't feel like gets talked uh, about quite enough in terms of what the separation is from them. And before I get into it, I just want to say, hey guys, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, hit that subscribe button. It gets you entered into my monthly prize giveaways. Uh, all you got to do is subscribe to the channel. So if you're watching on a regular basis, hit that subscribe button. And lastly, if you want to support the channel, uh, go to therealshot.com. It's a link in my description. It's a tackle shop here in Wisconsin that you can buy uh, pretty much all the tackle you're looking for from the baits I'll be talking about today, I believe, are there. At least they've got a couple of them. Um, so just make sure, you know, if you're looking at supporting the channel, that you go check out that link. And if you use the code STEFAN10, you can get 10% off your order. And therefore, you support the channel, and you're getting a little bit of a discount on the tackle that you would have bought anyway. So uh, check it out, guys. So today, what do I want to talk about? I want to talk about frogs. Specifically, how I break it down into three categories of frog. We've got toads, which are your plastic moving baits, such as these buzz and speed toads, or you've got the, uh, uh, what is it, Zoom makes the uh, horny toad, I'm drawing a blank there. Uh, you know, Spro has got some great walking frogs, hollow belly frogs. This is the second variation. Uh, and then there's a poppin' frog style, like Spro has one. Berkeley's come out with this power pop and some other variations. Um, so those are kind of the three ways I break down my frog. Now I want to talk about each one in terms of when I use it and how my tackle differs a little bit. Specifically, let's start with what I consider toads. So toads are just plastic baits that have the tails that you just reel across the surface. So these are the Berkeley Buzz and Speed toads similar to a horny toad style bait. Uh, just, you know, a great all around bait for moving water and a great bait to use as a trailer. So a toad is made to cover lots of water. It's meant to be reeled straight across the water surface. So they're really good for covering vast expanses of weeds, whether you've got, uh, you know, a giant lily pad field or you've got topped out grass, areas that are thick enough where you can't work, say, a buzz bait or a, another topwater bait because there's just too much debris on the surface, the toad works great to be cast and retrieved over those areas. I love to use a toad when fishing big grass flats, and I'm just looking to try to find areas that have concentrations of fish. If I can get numerous blow-ups on a toad, at that point, I know I can slow down and probably pitch, you know, if it's milfoil or some some deeper weed i know i can probably pitch a heavier weight texas rig bait into that area get more bites if there's some holes in the weeds i can throw a, a wacky rigged or a weedless a texas uh, texas rigged like berkeley general or whatever your favorite stick worm is you can put it into the holes in those weeds but the toad is the main key in that in that it it's allowing me to find groups of fish in huge expansive flats of weed and a lot of times that's the key. You know, once you find that small area, there's a ton of fish sitting there. But when these areas are acres upon acres, you need to have a bait that covers water quickly. And that's what's so great about a toad. You could do the same with a hollow belly frog, but I feel like it takes you two or three times longer to work the same amount of water with a toad or with a hollow belly frog as it would be with, with a toad. The other nice thing about the toads is they're really good trailers on, on lots of different baits. So I love to throw them on buzz baits. I love to throw them, uh, you know, even occasionally on swim jig. It's just a good bait that you can use as a trailer if you're, you know, looking to, to again, have the, the toad motion and just cover additional water. But it's basically a, a weedless buzz bait. That's what it is. And it gets a lot of strikes. The one thing I don't like about toads is you do get a lot of missed blowups because the bait is moving so quickly across the surface. Um, not a ton that you can do about with that, but I do like to use a slightly slower speed rod versus when I'm throwing a hollow belly. So, you know, in this case, I'll still throw 
it'll be a, a really heavy, medium heavy, or a lighter heavy action rod, but I want more of a moderate speed uh, speed action on that rod versus a fast action rod. I want to be able to allow that fish to suck the bait in and then I'll, I'll set the hook. So when you do get a blow up, one of the best things you can do when fishing these is to wait until you know that that fish has your bait. Whether you feel the fish or you watch your line, you want to wait until you set the hook. It's really good to use like a screw in uh, hook with this where you've got a, a, a screw lock in the tip and then you just rig it Texas style. That's when I like to throw a toad. Uh, again, it's really meant for covering water in my eyes. And it, it's just one of those baits, once you get bite, once you get bites, you can slow down dramatically. <clears throat> then you've got your just hollow belly frogs. You've got a straight point on that, like the Spro. Uh, this is a bronze eye 65. Kind of the standard size hollow belly I like to use. This is the frog, the hollow belly that I prefer. I think it's got really good hookups, uh, really nice colors as well. The key with this bait, or I won't say the key, I will go to this bait when I'm fishing more isolated cover, or if I know I've already located an area that's got a lot of fish in it. So say I was throwing the toad, if I find an area that's good and they're biting that frog or the toad really well, they're hitting top water, that's when I like to take your hollow belly and slow down dramatically and just kind of pick apart different clumps of weeds. It would basically be doing the same thing with say a, a heavier weighted Texas rig, instead of flipping in there, I'm just really soaking the hollow belly. So it's great for fishing weeds, obviously, and pad flats, that type of thing. But I really, really like to throw hollow bellies around docks and really isolated cover. So if you've got, you know, shade lines are great, overhanging trees, um, you know, any sort of small clumps of weeds, those are the areas I like. I like to, to fish high percentage areas with the hollow belly frog. I do not like to go fish huge expansive flats and just randomly cast the frog. Now, obviously, yes, you will get bit doing that, but I like to know where those fish are located in those giant flats or go to isolated targets, like I said, like a fish in a dock, or you know, if you've got small clumps of, of milfoil along the edge of a shoreline, and you're really only fishing, say, a 15-foot section of the cast, you know, maybe the last 15 feet. It's just a great bait if you know that you're fishing an object that has a good chance of holding a fish. It's really good to work around laydowns as well. Because of how weedless these baits are, you can throw them pretty much anywhere and know that you're going to be able to get them back. With respect to tackle, you know, I've got other videos where I talk about fishing frogs. You know, for me, I like a shorter rod, you know, in that seven foot range, because when I, I like to have, I like to be able to walk it better in place. And I feel like I can do that better with a shorter rod because a longer rod, you end up pulling the bait further every twitch because of it being a longer rod. So I prefer a shorter rod. I like a fast action and I like to hit them hard. I mean, when they blow up on it, if I think they've got it, I'm going to set the hook hard. I do not like waiting to know if I've got that fish on because what ends up happening is you, they get you buried way down deep in the grass. With these two hooks, if they've got that in their mouth, you're going to you're going to stick them and I want to be able to get them back out of that hole that they blew up in and get them coming to me as fast as possible. I'm willing to wait with the toad because you've only got one hook and you have to make sure that they've got that in their mouth. So that's when I like to throw a hollow belly. Then you've got your popping frogs. You know, this is the, the power pop, the Spro's got their popping frog, which is just this with a cup. I will tend to go to that again when I'm fishing isolated cover, but I don't have the weed that I would have, you know, when I'm fishing the frog. So if I'm fishing just a plain dock, I will generally go to a popping frog. If I'm fishing just overhangs with no uh, no weeds or anything else around, I'd rather choose the popping frog over just the normal frog. And the reason for that just comes down to the fact that this has a little bit more of that popper motion with the the popped the, with the cup lip in there. But if you've got weed and and other debris on the surface, 
it, it the pop and lip makes it harder to bring that bait through and that's when i would rather go with just the hollow belly you know the pointed nose bait so i would say you know half the time i throw a pop and frog other time i throw the hollow belly it just comes down to the targets if i'm fishing you know just more open water i definitely go with the pop and frog if i'm fishing something that's a little bit thicker and the pop and frog doesn't come through it nearly as well i go with the pointed standard hollow belly frog and if I'm fishing huge expansive flats, I prefer to throw a buzz and toad. So that's really what it comes down to guys with respect to the, the tackle, the uh, rod and reel. Again, I'm throwing the same, same tackle with the hollow belly as I am with the, the popping frog. You want to hit them hard, get them coming. You've got plenty of hooks in your popping frogs to get them coming. And that's what it comes down to guys. It's, it's, they're all somewhat interchangeable, but if you tried to throw a popping frog in an expansive weed flat, you'll find that it, it just doesn't come through nearly as well and you'll be getting a lot of weed, you know, and vice versa. You can throw the buzz and your toads, the buzz and toads over open water and they work great. You'll get some bites, you know, you'll get plenty of bites doing it, but I would rather throw one of the other frogs in open water just because my hookup percentages are going to be better in my opinion. So I hope that was helpful. That's how I break down what I consider to be the three types of toads and frogs. And uh, it's been really successful for me. I've caught a lot of big fish, a lot of, I've won a lot of money on frogs over the years. So hopefully this was helpful to you guys. If it was, hit the like button, share it on your social media pages, leave me a comment. Let me know what your favorite frogs are and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching guys.